what equity is, why do they give equity in technology companies? When we start negotiating for equity and understanding what is the incentive behind it is critical. So equity is ownership in a company via shares, or you own a company outright, or you actually purchase assets. And so there are three fundamental ways that you can get equity. You can go buy equity shares on the stock market. You own equity or a portion of that company and all the benefits that come with it. Number two, you can build it. It's what founders do. Founders go build equity. You think of Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Terry Ellison, all of these guys who now are billionaires. They built companies that they had very large portions of equity in, and that grew their wealth tremendously, it made them billionaires. The third way you can get equity is you can trade for it. This is the way to get equity that's least talked about. You are trading your time and talent in exchange for salary and equity. When you're trading for equity. What does that look like? Why do technology companies provide it? I was doing some research and did not realize I knew it went back to the 70s, but it was actually in the 50s in the 60s that semiconductor companies used equity as a way to attract and retain top talent. Let's double click on that because this is where the incentives lie. This is where the negotiation happens is they want to attract top talent. So if you want to attract top talent, you need to then have a desirable equity package. And sometimes the risk goes higher on a company. So the early stage startup, you're going to find less salary, more equity, but they want to attract you with a very attractive equity compensation package. They also want to retain you as you stay at companies, as you start moving through what's called your vesting cycle, and you're taking more of the ownership shares that they granted you. They're going to refresh. They're going to give you more. These are the golden handcuffs. You are getting more equity as time goes on so that you stay there. And they're doing this for top talent. As I talk about in my framework of you want to build expertise to trade for equity. And in the negotiation, you want to position yourself as this rare and valuable asset. It's because that's where you get leverage. They want to attract top talent. So here's a nice, interesting package for you. They want to retain you. They want to continue to give you equity, salary, and those types of things. But you need to be and be able to articulate that you are the top talent. That is key. And so that's important to understand those fundamental underpinnings of what is equity. It is ownership in the company. They're giving it to you to attract and retain you as top talent. Those are the top level basics and fundamentals. It's important that we understand what's the incentive for our side. So you could go and negotiate for a salary and a bonus to any company, but putting yourself into a technology company where now you have very large companies, Amazon, Microsoft, Oracle, Salesforce.com, the list goes on and on of public technology companies that offer equity compensation as part of their packages to attract and retain top talent. They need to remain competitive. They don't just drop off that component of equity compensation once they go public. And working for that type of equity is lower risk risk, lower reward. It's more conservative. On average, across the spectrum of early stage startup to established public company that's giving equity, people that work for equity make on average 35% more a year. My story. Okay, here I am almost two years into Splunk and I have incentive stock options. I have RSUs that are now vesting and I purchased some ESPP. What do I do? What do you do? in this scenario. Well, I know what I did is first and foremost, as I was getting these, I started documenting in a spreadsheet what they were, what were the key dates and what was happening. I wanted to understand and document when was vesting happening, getting to a vesting date, when were shares going to become mine? I wanted to understand and document fair market value, strike price, and start putting together some estimates because understanding the dates, understanding what happens when is so important. So if for ISOs, for instance, I was tracking the grant vesting date, the fair market value, I was tracking the strike price. We were planning, okay, what were we going to actually invest to purchase these shares? So tracking and understanding what you have going back to this first episode and sort of documenting what do you have in front of you is really important. And laying it out on a spreadsheet is important so that you can see what is happening. You can see key events, key dates, making sure always do an inventory that you're getting what was on the contract 
contract. It's so important. So in just having that purview and that understanding and looking and seeing what the dollar amount is going to be and that level of income is important for you because you are the CEO of your financial future. Do not turn this over to somebody else.